Welcome to our new video. In the previous episode, back at the end of November last year, we showed that we had finally stumbled upon a Linux distribution that ticked all the boxes when it comes to the issues of ease of use, stability and reliability in a production environment. And that was Manjaro KDE. However, the success the distribution made having worked flawlessly for two months back then, owed to a crucial element. We have used Manjaro as it is, meaning with no additional software sources turned on, such as Flatpak or AUR, which stands for Arch User Repository. It meant that no usually notorious Manjaro updates broke the system, because we were using it just with its official repositories. In this episode, we will show you how the system behaved with the first additional software source added, Flatpak support. Was it a smooth sail? We'll see in the video, so stay tuned. So right after the first episode, we decided to add the Flatpak support to the system. It's within the Manjaro's software app, under the third party tab. And then we were in anticipation of how the updates would work now. Enabling Flatpak support in a Linux distribution means better availability of applications that distributions usually do not ship in their official repositories. Like here, if you need a proprietary web browser, such as Microsoft Edge, you can get it via Flathub. Or a free and open source one, like Brave. For the Flatpak support to make sense, we needed to install an app from Flathub. So we decided to install Tenacity, a free and open source audio editor. The installation went successfully. And very soon we faced a substantial update, almost half a gigabyte in size. Let's see how it goes. The update was installed and the system required a restart for the changes to take effect. Still a couple of hours later, the Flatpak update was available only via the command line and not through the graphical software manager. Meanwhile, we decided to install another app from Flathub, Chromium, a very popular free and open source web browser. And the updates hadn't caused issues, but something else did. The installation of the app from Flathub seemed to fail. However, Chromium was among the apps in the internet section, meaning it was installed. And it was also on the list of the apps installed from the Flathub platform. Most importantly, the app started as it should, with no issues. For comparison, we also installed Chromium from the official repositories. And you know what? The installation went smoothly, with no issues whatsoever. At the same time, we had another considerable update, over 600 megabytes in size. The update behaved as expected, and after the restart, the machine worked as it should. Nothing was broken. In the meantime, the installation of apps from Flathub has been improved. Installing another app this time around proved successful, both in terms of the installation itself and the starting of the application. And finally, we had another substantial update the other day, with its size around 1.2 GB. The update went perfectly, without any problems. After the update, the system worked normally. So, in conclusion, adding Flatpak support hasn't produced any significant issues. We had several updates, including minor ones, we haven't shown in the video, and everything was ok. The system has worked flawlessly for almost three more months. It was stable and dependable. 
the issue with the Flatpak app installation was fixed in the end. In the next episode, we will add AUR support too, and we will see where it will lead us. If you found the video helpful, please give it a like and leave a comment down below. Also, share it and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching the video and we will see you next time.